It's a three-way split between Lucky's company, Future Energy, another Sri Lankan company called IMS, and the Meteor Clean Energy Fund. IMS are an existing company, but have started a dedicated company just for this project. It's called Mega 10. The Mega 10 guys also show up late. Hello, good to meet you. Tony Lanier. Uh, Welcome yes. to Sri Lanka. Thank you very much. Thank you very I think much. my first impression of the Mega 10 people, as well as the people from Future Energy, is absolutely convinced in what they're doing has, can make a demonstrable change in Sri Lanka. A lot of passion. There was youth there as well, as well as age and wisdom and, and lots of very, there was, there's a couple of par references, quite the sage. He's done it, he's seen it, he, he knows what it's all about. Um, slightly comes across as, as a bit of a teacher type. Um, and I think that that constellation is quite interesting. And I think that that will bring the project much, much further than other projects that seem to be a flash in the pan. They truly are trying to figure out how they can do this better than how it's been done before. A bit of a downside was that um, the Clean Energy Fund, we invest not only in the technologies, but we invest in the management. So I, I had this slight niggly feeling that they would like to put together the business plan and the numbers together that would best suit us. So maybe these next few days, it, that'll go away. But right now, I just have this little bit of a feeling is, tell us what you want to hear, and we will tell you. And, and that's not ideal. Today is the start of Lucky's tour around the country to show off her renewable energy ideas. Her team have hired a tour bus for the four-day trip. Central to the journey is Tawny's due diligence for the investment into the Gliricidia power plant. So first, it's a visit to Dr. Ray's plantation to see a miniature Gliricidia power plant in operation. And that's a Gliricidia right there. This is a 35 kilovolt amp Gliricidia or Dendro gasifier system, which provides fuel for a gas engine generator. It's a working coconut plantation that has processing machinery powered by the generator. And it's also Tawny's first site of the Gliricidia plant. And then, that's the Gliricidia. That's and, then, that's and they have to cut it down to such yes. more size. Yeah, that's branches are harvested and force dried in an outdoor drying machine before being used to generate power. The Gliricidia is grown all around the power plant and in between the rows of coconut trees that form the main cash crop of the plantation. It's coppiced every six months. This generates new growth. Oh, with the coppicing, you, you know, you cut it once and you get three out. So it's a quite sustainable, it's a fast growing plant. And they use this, they use the coppiced not the main tree, for, to run the, to get energy. So they have to coppice it anyway, and it, it was just waste before, and now it can be used for energy. It's kind of a slightly interesting tree, isn't it, in a very bushy way. It grows very fast. I should say this is about maybe three months after coppicing. This is three months? Yeah. About How about that. this one? How about these, the, the bigger no, ones? No, that's right. No, this, uh, yeah, usually I cut a whole lot. So some Because this faster. is much bigger than the other ones. Yeah, so. True, true. Depends. You know, some, some vines just grow faster. Yeah. You see? Uh, in about six months, it will be about an inch or one and a half thick. Because here, here I was saying that here's they've coppiced yeah, and yeah, three yeah. grow. That's right. That's right. So uh, in six months, you are ready to cut again. Yeah. I'm, I'm really quite... Curious. Um, I was quite interested to see the Glyrcidia and see where they're in yeah, this coppicing because yeah. you hear about it, oh, yeah, you yeah, coppice yeah, once and it grows yeah, up here, well, yeah, yeah. but there, you know, there we saw it, yeah, that um, you get three for one, basically. So the plan now is to scale this up into a 10 megawatt power plant, um, which would have a 30 kilometer radius whereby we would actually obtain the Gliricidia from farmers within that 30 kilometers. It would mean that 50 people would be employed directly in the power plant. 
and about 2,000 farmers would derive income from supplying us wood. And if you think about it from a family perspective, that would affect about 8,000 individuals within this area would earn extra income. And so you have a major case of poverty alleviation. We are at Ganarua, Peradeniya, the Agriculture Department uh, Demonstration Park. What they are doing here is the model that we are recommending to farmers to grow Giricidia in what is called the alley cropping. We are, you're not growing Giricidia by itself. It is always done, mixed. done mixed. So intercropping. Mixed is, are you go a step beyond, it's just not a mixed plantation. It's a synergistic uh, approach, right. you know, each one helps other. They, are, they have got corn growing along with Giricidia. Always with the alley of uh, uh, Giricidia trees and in between a cash crop. After visiting the project, Lucky is keen to share her philosophy. The Most of the time, a challenge. large scale projects, always a large scale, because a politician wants to stand up and say, I have built down a, a huge dam. Or That's a, definitely yeah, part of it. Which is always the problem, actually. And what they should learn to do is think about decentralized, smaller scale, sustainable, creating a community that can support the exercise rather than some, you know, if you look at, in my view, I think the future should be about a decentralized grid yeah. because this yeah, idea, yeah. a nonsensical idea, you plant something and have a zillion transmission lines and just waste half the energy. It's just such a catastrophe, you know? The whole of the West have done that. We don't need to go there because we now have a blank sheet of paper where we don't have any of those bad, bad habits. So before we go and create bad habits, we need to think of a different way of working. Separate from the Giricidia project, um, Future Energy um, is also looking at municipal waste. There is uh, a project which we are working in collaboration with uh, in Kendi, which is taking waste and creating that into energy. So what you have here is rubbish. And the point is to take this and convert it to that, where all you've done is you put the garbage with the polythene layer underneath and covered it up so it's less of an eyesore and as it ferments it gives off methane which we can burn and create energy and prevent the water table from being polluted from the toxicity of the smoldering decomposing waste by putting it through this polythene layer. We have the uh, alive uh, layer of waste polythene and clay which purifies its biofilter and what is coming out of is after the liner you get pure water coming out of here. So by having the system of having polythene is creating a system of almost pure water which is perfectly okay to go into the water table or, yeah. or the reverse. Now this um, uh, we have the gas extraction pipes all right uh, which, which comes in here through uh, um, diaphragm pump, all right, in here. This is the flame, you can see. The team now travel into the hotter and more rural area of Bibile in the east. This is where the money will be invested to build the new 10 megawatt Gliricidia power plant. Para has organized the tawny to meet face to face with the farmers who will be responsible for growing the Gloricidia. Supply of the wood is critical to the power plant and it's a major source of concern for the investors. These are basically the people that will deliver the goods. They're the supply chain and it's incredibly important to meet with them. I'm very encouraged um, for what I've seen and I'm very interested in hearing what you think about this. It was good, good and bad, because I make decisions. I have to help make decisions that are very cut and dry. This was very emotionally charged. They, obviously they need help. Obviously they understand the value of having somebody come in and doing this for them. The question I have when I go home is, will it make business sense? Because I can't make a decision, or I can't help my investment community make a decision on whether or not these beautiful people have another income if on paper it doesn't work, or the management team just doesn't work, or the deal doesn't come off. 
But I'm once again, I'm not making a decision. I just make the recommendation.